How are they guys? Neil at Italia Autos here. Welcome back to another video on my channel. Behind me we have the 155 and you can see the engine has been removed. So today's video is going to be about looking over the engine, seeing where the weak points are because it had done 130,000 miles-ish. So we're going to have a look over it, see where the oil's leaking, see, see what's worn, whether there's any damage to the pistons, any damage to the cylinders, any damage to the crankshaft, not crankshaft, the um, camshafts. Uh, we're going to have a look over that. So that's what we're going to do now. If you are new to the channel, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And join me in a second when we'll start stripping that engine down. So this is the engine already stripped down. I've taken most of it off so we can just have access to all the little nooks and crannies to try and find out exactly where the weak points are and where it started to leak. And instantly you can see from the balance belt seals, we've got some oil leaking from there. It looks like there's a little bit of oil coming from the main camshaft seal. That is the intake camshaft. A little leak from the exhaust camshaft as well. Quite a bad leak from the balance belt there. Cam belt is still uh, like new because it has literally done about mm, two miles in the last um, seven years. So um, yeah, that's still good. On to the exhaust side of the engine now. It looks like we have got the oil leaking from the intake camshaft, leaking onto the side of the engine. Maybe a little bit of rocker gasket leakage, but that was a new rocker gasket um, seven years ago, but yep, seven years it could still be leaking. And for the, that side of the engine, that's about it for oil leaks. Now onto the back of the engine, we may have had a little bit of a leak from the crankshaft sensor. A little bit of oil around here, it looks like it's sort of come from up top here and down and round. So that could be again from the seal on the camshaft. And that is about it. There's no signs of any leaking from a head gasket or anything like that. So now let's look at the last side, which is the crankshaft and uh, clutch side of the engine. The main crank seal, it's got some oil leaking out of it now from the way I've been storing it. But it doesn't look as though it's leaking much oil out of it. Maybe there's a little bit of leakage from the other side of the balance shaft seals. And that is about it. So now let's pull the engine cover off and we'll pull the sump off and then eventually we'll pull the head off and have a look at see how the cylinder liners and the pistons are holding up. Now I've always got to say when I'm removing these alloy heads pretty much on any engine, the twin spark and the Fiat Coupe 20 valve engine Whenever you're removing these top engine covers, be extremely gentle with them because the right hand side corners do snap off very easily if you over torque the uh, corner bolts. Uh, you can also thread, double thread, cross thread a lot of the bolts in the head if you over tighten them. So you do need to make sure you know what you're doing with your torque specs. Now that is what I like to see. The engine is pretty clean. It's not dark and all carboned up. You can still see the, the lightness of the aluminium in the head. That looks very smart indeed. Looking at the lobes on the camshafts, there's not much wear on them. There's no scratching, there's no score marks. So that is pretty good. So now let's get these spark plugs out, get it to top dead centre and pull the head off. Now I think these spark plugs have been in here a lot longer than the seven years I've owned the car because I don't remember changing them when I first got it. So I think they're going to be in quite a bad way. Don't think I could find that bigger pair of pliers to get these spark plugs out. See a bit of oil and water had mixed into that well, but that's probably just from being sat outside and just general moisture in the air has got into the oil, which has probably been spilt from when you've uh, put some oil in it. Um, spark plugs, they're not amazing, but they were still doing the job because the car still ran, but they will get changed when the engine uh, goes back in. So now let's stick my gauge in. Rotate the engine around to top dead center, pull the cam belt off and then we can get that head off. Now I'm just removing the auxiliary belt pulley and I do use a hammer very lightly on it because it was rather stuck on there but I generally like to pry it off with the breaker bar from side to side and just kind of wiggle it off bit by bit but hitting it hard with a hammer is a no-no because they are very easily broken and I imagine they're getting a little bit harder to find nowadays as well. So if you are doing this at home do be very gentle with it. 
And if you do need to hammer it, I do find trying to hammer it on rather than hammering it off in the center because it will just kind of break the rust seal on it and allow you to get it off. Also, take your time with it because getting angry with it is not going to make it come off any quicker. Just walk it off nice and slowly, a few light taps with a hammer and then just walk it off slowly and as you can see when I move my hand out of the way that um, it does start moving and it comes off quite quickly once you can start waggling it. And now we can start rotating the engine round to top dead centre. But as the engine was lying on its side, the gauge wasn't dropping down like it normally does, so I actually totally missed the first rotation. There it is, look, coming to top dead centre. And um, I had to rotate it a few more times because I was getting a little bit confused with myself and then I realised what was going on. So, um, yeah, this was the, the, the long way round to getting top dead centre, I'm afraid. And there we go, we are now at the point where number one piston is at its highest point. And now the gauge is out, we can release the cam belts. We undo the tensioner first. Sometimes the belt can be a little bit tight and also as there are no cam locks on it, um, the cam will move and I've deliberately not put them on because it's coming off now the heady so um, it doesn't need to be in time because it's all going to be re-timed up when it comes back together. Because the cams had moved around a little bit it was a little bit tight to get off so I undone the auxiliary tensioner to get a little bit more uh, space to get that camber off. Now I'm just removing a couple of the plastic brackets which hold the engine cover on and that also stops the head coming off because they connect to the head and the block. So once they're removed we should have a little bit more access to get everything off and I do leave one on so I'll get that one off in a second. And now we can start removing the bolts to get the head off. As you can see I am removing them in a circle rotation just to relieve the pressure on the head and making sure you don't snap anything or walk anything. Now some people like to reuse these bolts but I do believe they are a one time use stretch bolt so they will be being replaced for brand new ones. Now I bet it's going to want a little tap first. Yes it is. It also makes life a lot easier if you remove these bolts before you try and get the head off or at least leave one in to stop it from dropping down because they do get a little bit caught when you're trying to pull the head off. And that is the uh, last little bracket I forgot to remove. Now a set of head bolts costs about £40 and a head gasket set, a complete head gasket set, is going to be around £100. So it's not tremendously expensive to get the parts to rebuild the engine. I'm not sure how much these shells are for the uh, crank. But um, the whole expense of doing an engine rebuild is the labour to get the engine rebuilt itself. If you need the head skimming, you need the hones boring, you need the crankshaft balancing, it can get quite expensive. So an engine rebuild like this, you could be looking at anywhere from two grand to five grand, depending on how much labour you've got to do yourself and how many new parts you need, because you're also going to be needing uh, a cam belt kit, you're going to be wanting a clutch, and you're also going to be wanting spark plugs and stuff like that. So it can get quite expensive doing an engine rebuild build.
Right, let's have a look in cylinder number two first because we can see inside there. Uh, you can still see all the scratches, which is the score marks, the cross hatching, that's what I meant to say. Um, the piston is relatively clear of carbon, but there is a little bit of carbon build up on it. Uh, a little bit of dust has fell in to number three, but again, looks fine. No major lip anywhere. Nothing I would say is a problem. Probably a little bit glazed, but um, that will all be sorted out. And the other cylinders, again, look perfectly fine. Nothing really wrong with them at all. Now let's have a look at the underside of the head. It's normally where you get carbon build up and um, hopefully uh, not too much wear on the valves. Not too bad, to be honest. The head gasket looks in reasonable shape. It's not about to blow through anywhere. The valves have a little bit of carbon build up on them. but I wouldn't really worry about anything on that because that will all be cleaned up. So overall, I don't think the engine is, is terrible at all, not in the slightest. All it's suffered with is aging. It's 30 years old, so it is gonna have some oil leaks on it. And that is the reason why I'm refurbishing the engine because all these seals are gonna need changing because most of them did have a little bit of weepage from them, to be honest. So all that's gonna be done to this. Everything's gonna be thoroughly cleaned. It's gonna be pressure tested on the head. The head will be skimmed. It's going to have new gaskets everywhere. It'll have new um, bearings on the crankshaft. And that should be about it. Pop it back together and it should be good for another 130,000 miles. While the engine's out, we might as well have a little look in the engine bay and see what needs doing in here. I can see from here, there's a couple of little bits of rust on the chassis legs, but nothing to worry about really. So um, let's have a little look over it and we'll see what needs doing on here. You can see down there, a little bit of rust coming through, but that can all be treated and sorted out. Underneath there, the typical spots of rust coming through, that can all be cleaned up and repainted. And exactly the same on that side, but we can't quite see under there at the minute. The front bumper supports, again, they're all, they're all rotting away, but they can be repaired or removed to, from the, to a certain extent down the bottom. This side isn't too bad, to be honest. That will live to see another day. Under the wheel arch, it isn't too bad. A little bit of rust coming through under there, but nothing there. Um, we are gonna wanna put some new brake pipes and hoses on it. We do need to do a little bit of a rust repair up there. Underneath the arch, it isn't too bad, to be honest. It's a lot better on this side than the other side. Again, new brake pipes and hoses, a little bit of um, rust coming through here, but that can all be tidied up without any issues at all. So yeah, when I've eventually got some more time, I can start working on that rust in the engine bay. What I'll probably do is just paint it black, to be honest, I think that's the best thing for it because you're not gonna see it once the engine's in and it'll look a lot tidier. Um, but you never know, I might change my mind. I might put a little bit of red on it if I've got some left from painting it. So hopefully you've enjoyed this one, guys. Don't forget to hit that like, share and subscribe button and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.